Hello, my name is Xavier Robert, coming to you live from the beautiful hills of Ibiakarin. A very good evening to you. And today on Worldview, Putin rules out limit on financial support for Russia's armed forces. UN officials condemn Taliban banning women from universities. Peru's new Prime Minister Otarola sworn in. Details of these stories and Mo in a moment. Worldview today. Russian President Vladimir Putin has promised to give his armed forces anything they asked for to support the military campaign in Ukraine. In a speech to the defense chiefs in Moscow, Putin said there were no financial limits on what the government would provide its military. He also said Russia needed to take special note of the importance of drones in the 10 month old conflict and that Russia's hypersonic Samrat missile dubbed Satan II potential and the combat readiness of nuclear forces against the backdrop of Moscow's offensive in western back to Ukraine. Meanwhile, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu has proposed raising the age range for mandatory military service to cover citizens aged 21 through 30. This is, as he said, forces would continue to fight in Ukraine next year. Under the current law, Russians aged between 18 and 27 can be called up for mandatory military service. But Shoigu and President Vladimir Putin have repeatedly said they are not being sent to fight in Ukraine. Speaking at an end-of-year conference with Russia's military chiefs and Putin, Shoigu also said Russia was accelerating the deployment of modern weapons supplies to the army. In the meantime, Russia's defense minister Sergei Shoigu says Moscow's forces waging a military campaign, the remark in a report during a meeting of President Vladimir Putin with his country's top military officers. He said in Ukraine, Russian servicemen were opposed to the combined forces of the West. In a related development, Russia's Gazprom has launched production at the Koivta gas field. This took place in a ceremony presided over by President Vladimir Putin and the head of Gazprom, Alexei Miller. The field, which is the largest in eastern Russia, will supply gas to China through the power of Siberia gas line. Now, still on the crisis, the Kremlin says it sees no chance of peace to talks. The peace talks with Ukraine as long as the West is supplying Kiev with arms. In a call with reporters, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov warned that Continued Western military affirmed that Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky was traveling to Washington for a visit expected to include the announcement of no military aid to the country. Meanwhile, the Kremlin is warning that increasing the supply of U.S. arms to Ukraine would aggravate the devastating 10-month war ignited by Russia's illegal invasion. Speaking during a meeting with his top military brass, Russian President Vladimir Putin said Moscow would take lessons learned in the conflict to develop its armed forces and strengthen the capability of its troops. He said special emphasis would go to developing nuclear forces, which he described as the main guarantee alien to 1.5 million personnel. And to more developments from the war, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky is on his way to Washington, where he will meet U.S. President Joe Biden. It is his first foreign trip since Russia invaded in February. The U.S. has confirmed that it will supply Ukraine with a Patriot missile system, significantly increasing the country's air defense capability. Zelensky said his visit to the U.S. was staying with the crisis in Ukraine now. It has emerged that air raid sirens today bled across the country. Local officials announced this, but there was no immediate word of a new wave of Russian attacks. Russia has carried out a series of missile and drone strikes on Ukrainian energy infrastructure since mid-October, knocking out power and causing emergency blackouts in many areas. 
In Malaysia development, the International Atomic Energy Agency chief Rafael Grozzi will visit Russia tomorrow. For discussions on the creation, the international institutions in Vienna announced the planned visit. The plant in Russian-occupied territory has reportedly come under repeated shelling attacks that each side has blamed on the other, raising fears of a nuclear disaster. The Kremlin, however, said President Vladimir Putin had no plans to hold talks with Grozzi during his trip to Russia tomorrow. Now, after the break, we'll look at how UK ambulance workers have strike, are going to strike for higher wages amid decades high. One truth, not often to an opportunity. On Spotlight Africa, we paint the African picture the African way, laced with truth, detail, and the color of the African continent. Join Uyai Anyekan every Tuesday and Thursdays at 4.30 p.m. Spotlight Africa, telling the African story. Many thanks for staying tuned. We'll move on now to Afghanistan, where the spokesman for the Secretary General of the United Nations has condemned the Taliban-led administration's decision to suspend women's access to universities. The spokesperson, Stefan Dujaric, said the denial of education violated the equal level, had urged the Taliban authorities to ensure women's equal access to education. Earlier, the UN envoy for Afghanistan also expressed her sadness over the Taliban banning women from universities. Away from that, now Saudi Arabia is open to more dialogue with Iran. This is according to comments made by the Iranian foreign minister after he met his Saudi counterpart in Jordan. In a tweet published today, Iranian foreign minister Hossein Amiradolehin said he spoke with Saudi Foreign Minister Prince Faisal al Saud, and other recalled that the two regional rivals had cut diplomatic ties in 2016 after a crowd stormed the 
Sunni majority kingdom's embassy in Tehran following the execution of a prominent Shia leader. Now, elsewhere, Peruvian President Dina Boluarte has sworn in Alberto Oz earlier today, including the new prime minister, though she opted to keep other key figures on amid ongoing protests in the country. Following the impeachment of her predecessor, Otarola was named as the new prime minister alongside a new minister of defense and a new interior minister. However, Alex Hines. Now in Malaysia, the number of people killed in a landslide has risen to 26. The figure was given by rescuers. They added that seven people remained missing. In a separate development, UK ambulance workers today went on strike, widening a dispute with the government over its refusal to increase pay above inflation after recent walkouts. Way workers and passport control officers also threatening to ruin festive holiday getaways as the government refuses to cede on pay demands. Today, ambulance staff at the state-run National Health Service, including paramedics and call handlers, walked out, prompting warnings from healthcare leaders about straining a health system picket lines on Tuesday, just five days after their first strike in its 106-year history. And finally, on Worldview today, Bob Dylan has been offered a cameo on Coronation Street after revealing he is a fan of the ITV soap. The singer discussed his affection for the long-running ITV show in a rare interview with the Wall Street Journal. Dylan said watching the program makes him feel could sing karaoke with characters Ken Bellow and Rita Sullivan. And with that, we wrap up a package for you on Worldview today. Do ensure to follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel, all of which you can find on our web Worldview on Spectrum TV. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.